Well, hey, good morning, Journey. How are you doing today? Uh, this is Pastor Mark. Uh, this is your drive-in uh, to the Journey Church this morning. I uh, hope you're all doing well. I'm excited, looking forward to a great day uh, of worship uh, at the Journey Church. Uh, so, um, so this morning, we are starting uh, a season of Advent. What does that mean for us? Well, we go through uh, an anticipation of, of Christ's coming at Christmas and what does that mean uh, for us and so this morning we're gonna be lighting uh, the candle of hope and so I thought we'd talk about hope this morning what does hope uh, mean in the Bible well what hope is hope is a longing or a desire uh, for something to come for, to fruition something to to happen uh, that hasn't happened yet um, so there have been lots that have called it an otherworldly hope uh, and which is actually true because it's a hope in um, in uh, God, our Creator, and so uh, a couple of uh, others throughout history have combated this idea of, of a hope outside of ourselves. Uh, one of those was Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, claimed atheist who said God is dead, um, and so uh, Friedrich Nietzsche uh, said that the kind of hope uh, that that Christians believe and that that you find steeped in religion. Um, is is a, a hope that um, that is is meaningless and baseless uh, because he, he basically said it makes us cowards uh, because we're trusting in something else and he also said it makes us cowards because he says that kind of hope uh, leads us to a false sense of security um, there was also uh, another guy by the name of Karl Marx, who is the, the founder of, um, of uh, Marxism or, uh, or uh, was uh, steeped in, uh, in atheism as well. And so Karl Marx said that basically Christian hope is the opioid uh, opiate of Christianity. So basically what he said is, is that the kind of hope that we say we believe in just numbs us to the reality of being able to get ourselves out of the situation we're in. Well, see, we know that Paul says, uh, when he talks about it in Ephesians 2, that we were one time, we were a stranger from God. We didn't understand what true hope was. Uh, we were living in this false sense uh, of reality. But once we become a believer, uh, we understand that there is something so much greater out there. Uh, so the other uh, idea uh, behind hope is that we hope uh, for something that hasn't happened yet. Uh, in fact, Paul says in Romans 4, he says that the kind of hope that Abraham had when he left everything he knew uh, to pursue uh, you know, God's call on his life, he didn't question. He didn't look back. He didn't wonder, I wonder what's back there because he had a, a, a hope in something that was going to happen. So the kind of hope Christians have is it's, it's a kind of hope that you can bank on because it has happened in Abraham's life. It happened in Noah's life. It happened in, in Moses's life. It happened in David's life. And so all of these hopes, there's a sure, uh, uh, an assurance of something Something that's already taken place, something that's real. And so the kind of hope we believe in as Christians is the same kind of hope uh, that transforms our mind. We're told in Romans 12 too that we are to be renewed by the transforming of our minds. And so that's what happens when we become a believer. And so this Christmas, the kind of hope that we experience, the kind of hope that we see is another worldly hope. Uh, it's, it's not just about this earthly hope. It's an out of this world hope. And it's a hope in a living God who sent his son over 2000 years ago, born in Bethlehem, a backwater town uh, that most people would never have looked for a Messiah to come. He came in a, in, in a manger, in a stable in Bethlehem to be the savior of the world. And so we invite you this morning to celebrate that with us. We're looking forward to celebrating the great hope uh, we have in Christ Jesus this morning. I invite you to the journey at 10 o'clock this morning. If you make it, if you can't, just encourage you wherever you're worshiping at this morning, uh, we worship him not just in spirit and truth, but we worship him uh, in a great hope uh, because we know that that hope will not disappoint. That hope, as it says in Romans 5, 5, does not put us to shame. And it's a hope you can take to the bank today. It's the only sure thing in your life. God bless and journey on. Love you all very much.